All right, guys, what is up? Welcome to my bench. Uh, tonight, I wanted to put together a little video talking about this guy right here. Now, I've got a flight video that I put up. I'll have an updated flight video at the end of this video, video, video. When I first got this, I even did a short live stream. I've hit it because I got kind of sidetracked on that live stream and didn't say anything. So this, if you don't know, is the new Lightning H7 flight controller from Flight One. This they started doing pre-orders for back on July 4th. And I remember this because we were doing our Freedom Spec race here in Moberly and we raced all day. And then we came back to my house and we had Tiny Trainer racing at my house and like 3 a.m. sat down on my computer just to like collect myself for a couple minutes and I saw that Preston had posted the pre-order for these flight controllers so I placed my order and bought a handful of them. I just got them yesterday so it's been a long time coming they had some issues, they had a lot of issues kind of ongoing issues with uh, just getting them here even still like my understanding is they're primarily only shipping the solder direct versions and not the plug versions because the wire harness I got with this, the wire harnesses actually came with the ground and V bat lines mixed up they're working on i don't know if they're repinning those or getting new cables or what but that's kind of the situation there so i got it i got to spend some time with this flight controller getting my head around how i'm going to set it up and that kind of thing so this comes with two more plugs there's typically a plug on the front call this the front and the back and the front is where you connect your vtx your camera on the back is like all your extra stuff like the scl sca stuff i don't really know what all that is um, but there's some extra five volt stuff back here this plug toward the front is for your receiver. It comes with these. It didn't come in the same packaging, but uh, it came in the you know overall deal. So I think it comes with this wire harness. I don't really know what all it comes with. Mine came with these ESC cables that ended up being worthless. And then a few of these, which are for your receiver. So this is what you would wire up to Crossfire or your RXSR or your Ghost receiver, as I personally just got this is what it is i like having a plug for my receiver because all the receivers i use whether it be crossfire or the ghost now they are direct solder so my thought with plugs is with the esc i want to plug on both ends because i never want to have to like worry about those wires getting weak and breaking off I mean, if they've been soldered everything else though i want a plug at one end so cameras cameras i use i use the foxy or predator nano rather it's got a plug on it and then the vtx i use see if i've got one around here here's kind of a broken one i use the uh tbs unify hv race and it's got a plug on it you can direct solder it. If this would let me, I would probably use a plug for my VTX on this and then just direct solder it here or even use like the uh, Unify Nano on this. But you have to choose, are you going to direct solder your VTX and camera or are you going to use a plug for your VTX and camera because they both come inside of the same plug header. So um, once again, back to that camera thing, I only want to plug on one end and the camera has a plug on the back of it. So I need to direct solder my camera, which means I need to direct solder my VTX, which means I need a VTX that has a plug on it. These VTX is actually the most recent batch has been giving me some issues the unify hv races they've been my favorite for the longest time but i'm having an issue where i'll, I'll be on race band one and the timer's picking it up on race band two as well so that definitely shouldn't happen and it's happening like across a few different builds so i need to figure out what's going on there so that is that so a few things when i was doing the live stream talking about this i had some work stuff come up on my phone that i needed to attend to and then the other thing is i kind of got frustrated with the wire harness this is the wire harness that comes with it and you'll see it plugs in here and I was thinking oh cool all I got to do is take this other plug off put a plug on it and repin it so it matches up with my hobby wing ESCs or any ESCs that you want and then I realized that the plug on the end of this is bigger this is like the same size plug as the back of your cameras and stuff so this is a bigger size plug than what an ESC normally has on it and my understanding is this is the plug that's on flight one's ESC so that's why they did it that way a little frustrating but I was assuming that was the same size plug on this end and on this end and I was frustrated because I thought I was going to have to use this wire harness cut it off and then direct solder it to my ESC and that's what I ended up doing to the first one and it wasn't until later I got looking closer and I realized that the plug on the flight controller itself is your standard sized flight controller plug and it's just the other end that is bigger so um, I ended up going through I have a whole bag let me get it for you because it's kind of hilarious I have a whole bag of old ESC, some of the plugs, but I, you know, 
these ESC um, wire harness kits are really cool too. But anyway, I ended up making myself wire harnesses to go with all of my FCs. So it's good to go. And I've got them pinned out and ready to go for the Hobby Wing ESC. So that'll be nice and easy. So um, that's cool. That was the first kind of hurdle I had to overcome was figuring that out. Once I got that situated, that made me feel a lot better because I was not excited about having to solder one end of ESC connector. That is hogwash. No one wants to do that. So the next thing is uh, taking off these plugs and I've got one here. I'll show you an example of how I took it off. This says bad on it and we'll get into it in a minute about why it says bad on it, but let's zoom in here. The same thing kind of applies to both sides, but what I did to take off these connectors is I got these wire strippers that kind of have a blunt end on them and I just get a hold of it nice and solid the plug itself and make sure I'm not actually gripping onto the PCB or I'm not you know crushing any of the components or space in between there I get a hold of it nice and tight and I just twist it a little bit and the corner starts to come up and it breaks those little contacts there we go so these pop off pretty freaking easy and, uh, and that's it. What's really neat about this design, they made it in a way you can choose between soldering or plugs. It's up to you. Whereas old school on the millivolts, if you take off these plugs on the millivolt, there's no solder pads really under it. You have to like solder to the tiny little pins where the connector connects. So this has nice, I wouldn't call them full size, but for a 2020 FC, they're good size pads on this. Uh, let's talk about where it went bad, why it was bad. I burnt two of these. So the very first one I soldered up, I plugged it in the USB. It worked fine. Got everything kind of put together. I felt really confident with the way it was hooked up and I plugged it in with a smoke stopper, but a smoke stopper does not stop all of the smoke and uh, it died. I didn't get the full initialization beeps. It just died. There was nothing there. Let's talk about what it really is first because I don't want to confuse you. What it really is, it's got these solder bridges on it and I don't know if you guys can see that. It's got these solder bridge you can see this one is bridged and there's one on this side for your camera and there's one over here for your VTX and those solder bridges are for you to select your voltage however what you have to know about this flight controller is that it comes without soldering any bridges anywhere this flight controller comes with the camera and the VTX both set up to be on 5 volts you do not have to and actually you cannot do not bridge the solder pads. That even though there's a set of three pads, one that's camera in the middle and then either five volts or VBAT, and on the other side there's VTX and it's either five volts or VBAT. If you want to use five volts, you do not solder it to five volts. <laughs> I know I've kind of went round and round, but I know that that's not very intuitive. If you're like me and you see a solder bridge that says five volts or VBAT, I would think that it needs to be bridged over to five volts if that's what you're going to use. However, this flight controller comes with little resistors on it. And I'll show you the one that this is actually the reason mine burnt because I did it wrong. So don't be dumb like me. Right here is a little resistor. Now, there was one over here on the, on the VTX side. And the reason it's gone is because on the instructions it says, do not bridge the solder pads without moving the resistors. However, it says it comes for five volts. So the way I interpreted that was that it comes equipped for five volts. So you can solder the five volt pad and leave the resistors. However, that is wrong. Repeat with me. That is wrong. You do not solder bridge anything if you're using five volts. However, if you want to use VBAT, like I needed to do on my VTX, you bridge it to the VBAT side and then you remove this resistor. However, on the five volt side, the side that I was going to use for my camera that I want to be five volts because my camera doesn't take VBAT, I didn't need to bridge anything, but I bridged my camera to five volts on the little solder bridge and I did not remove the resistor and therefore I have $50, $45 piece of garbage here that I ruined because uh, I didn't take the time to understand fully the instructions. I wish personally the instructions were a little clearer and then the fact that I shared, I, I had this burn up, I shared pictures of everything, we talked about it, it still never really made sense. I soldered up a, a second one and for whatever reason, I think it was because I didn't have a lot of solder on the bridge, it never blew up. The second one, I did it the same way, but it never blew up. Great. I figured this out. Whatever it was, the first, I thought at the time that this one was just a fluke. So I went on to the third one, which is right here. And you'll notice it's got our favorite word on it. Bad. Bad because of bad, Sean. I did the same thing on this one. I soldered the five volt bridge without removing the resistor. The reason that there is, in fact, 
a five volt bridge. Like my my train of thought said, if there is, why would there be pad for five volts if you didn't have to bridge it? And the reason is, is because if you use those pads for VBAT and you remove the resistor, now you have the pad as an opportunity if you're going to go back to five volts. Whereas if it was just a, a VBAT bridge and the resistor and you remove the resistor and you wanted to go back to five volts, you wouldn't be able to. So that's the reason that they're on there. Um, I've been talking to Preston about maybe clarifying that language a little bit. That was something that, that was definitely a little bit problematic. So, so the way I set mine up here, I'll use my good one is I've got my VTX cable that I've made sure and I've verified that the pinouts match good for the FC side and the pinouts get match good for my hobby wing side. So that's good to go. This cable here, I think this is uh, RX and TX1, five volts and ground. I wire that up to my Addo ghost receiver. And then on, on the front here, I direct solder my camera over here, which is five volts ground and camera signal. That's on that side. On this side, I have VBAT, ground, video signal, and smart audio for my VTX. I solder those all there. And in general, I'm super happy with, with how it worked. They had it pre-flashed, so that was super simple. Once I got it in and working, I was able to set it all up, no problem. The other thing this has, which is a mandatory thing for me with flight controllers now, I'm really glad they came out with it. It's got a really good VTX pit switch. So you can turn the power of your VTX on and off um, on a switch. And that is now part of the Falco X like configuration when you're setting it up. So that's pretty freaking cool. The other thing that was a, definitely a huge surprise and it's still pretty buggy. The very first time I used it, it worked perfectly, but I haven't been able to get it to work since. This has the BL Heli 32 pass through built into it. So you can actually theoretically connect to your ESC now through a flight one flight controller without reinstalling or, or rebooting everything. So that is pretty cool. I look forward to that getting worked out right. And big props to PG3, um, Preston Garrison's son. Preston said he's the one that has been putting in all the work to this to get uh, pass through working. So that is uh, an incredible accomplishment. Anyone and everyone that, that has ever loved Flight One, the one thing they always say is, God, I wish it had pass through. It looks like that's uh, either a reality or going to be a reality very, very soon. So. I'm pumped up about that. That's it. That's how I run it. I've built up three quads with this so far. Two of them brand new. This is one right here. So uh, this is a brand new quad, um, brand new carbon, brand new antenna even, brand new camera. Um, so I, I've built these up in preparation for champs. I'm going to fly them some. I'm just going to try not to like really bash them around too much because I don't want the motors to get all junked up. But you can see in there, it's it's super clean. It's a little thinner profile than the millivolt. So it definitely have just a touch more clearance, which is cool. The flight characteristics, I'll be honest. I'm not one that typically notices the small nuances. And to be fair, I've installed um, these lightning flight controllers and the Go uh, receivers and transmitter into my gear and so I can't be certain the awesomeness that I love about my setup right now where exactly it's coming from because it's a lot I love about this ghost look at that little ghost antenna isn't that awesome? But I will say that just in general, the flight characteristics, there's very, very little prop wash. It's so incredibly responsive. I like it better than everything else. I've even experimented with beta flight this last week because uh, there's some tuning and, and recommendations and stuff that people had, had sent me. I still think flight one is significantly objectively better. It feels faster. It feels more responsive. And now with this flight controller, um, really, the sky is the limits. Um, if you don't know, this flight controller has an H7 processor in it, which is just like a faster, more capable brain, essentially. It can do a lot more things. It's got, in the software now built in, it's got an AI filter um, that's based on artificial intelligence in some manner. I'll be honest, I'm not completely sure if it is hype or not. It did seem to work pretty well. I, I wanna figure out if I turn the AI filter on, what other filters can I turn off? I tried turning the dynamic filter off, AI filter on, and my quad started to go to the moon. So that wasn't the right you know combination. So it's yet to be seen there. There. You know, they're just now rolling these out. It's brand new, but in general, I'm very, very pleased with the hardware. I don't have a picture of it here, but these little things over here are all cut off of the flight controllers because the way they come is like this. And so if you run 30 by 30, this will fit a 30 by 30 stack by you just put your gummies in the outside corners 
instead of the inside corners. You definitely have some options there. I think it's they've done a very, very good job with it. I was frustrated at first about the ESC plug. I'm glad that that ended up being um, different than I thought. I was frustrated at first whenever stuff kept you know breaking. Um, but uh, in general, I do think that this is a, a really great option for a flight controller. Yeah, here it is, the Lightning H7. I'm going to send you guys out with some uh, flight footage. Uh, these you could probably essentially pre-order again on the Flight One site. I think their their current batch is sold out. I I believe there's more batches coming. Anyway, that's it, guys. I'll send you out with some flight footage. Thanks for checking this out. We'll catch you next time on Heart of America FPV.